hello. Um, no one's ever here. Hello, hello, welcome. I can tag. I haven't been on here alone in a very long time. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm just tagging what I'm doing. And then we're going to have Ariel from Now Included joining us soon. One moment. Hey, Autumn, how are you? Over there on the West Coast, living your best life. All right. Let's see. I'm an old person now with the with these <laughs> with these uh technologies. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. As you come in, let us know. I did you hear about gut healthy recipes? I didn't finish this. Let me put this over there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My eyesight has also gotten way worse. So, like, to read things, I have to get very, very close. Hey, Ariel. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. good. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you for having Thank me in your you. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you for joining. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to our live. Yeah, we're so excited. Ina just said she was drinking probiotics for her health. Um, I'm assuming kombucha. Or kombucha. How do you how do you actually say that? I was supposed to like Google that before I got on here to like make sure I was saying it right. I, now I really you know everyone says it different. I say kombucha. kombucha. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. Kombucha. We're going with that yeah. for this live. <laughs> Shayla said our kitchens look similar. Yeah, they do, huh? <laughs> nice, nice. nice. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks. Every oh, John says that he hears yeah, kombucha. Yeah, because booch is a thing, right? Like that's like the cool thing people yeah. say. I guess. I don't yeah, know. I guess so. <laughs> How are you? How's your day been so far? I'm good. You know, coming off of a whirlwind of a week, but you know, I'm here. I'm excited. I am tired, but I'm looking forward to making these recipes uh, because I'm looking forward to eating really well because I haven't eaten that great in the last two days. So excited to eat good after this class yeah. i'm excited too and there are some ingredients here that i have that i like haven't ever used while cooking for example like the miso paste mm -hmm. and so i and i love miso but i've never done it myself so i'm excited to incorporate it in our sweet potato mash nice 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 um some someone says this our first instagram live welcome <laughs> welcome <laughs> thank you for being first. here I think that might be Dell. Dell is our CEO over at Acclimate slash now included. So thanks for coming, Dell. Um, all right, should we get cooking? Is there anything you want the people to know before we get started? I'm really yeah. because there's a double of us. So I'm gonna have to move the camera sometimes when I'm actually cooking so you won't see my face. But um yeah, anything anything you want to say? Yeah, about? yeah. Thanks everybody for coming again. My name is Ariel and I am with Now Included, which is a, di a digital health space created for Black people by Black people where we are really looking to just change the narrative around health and wellness within our community. We want to make sure that people are actively talking about it, have a place to go to access resources and opportunities. And so that is what we are doing over at Now Included. We're super excited that you're here and I'm excited to be here with Chef Lean. If you wouldn't mind just giving me a little background about who you are and then as we're cooking, we'll kind of go more into why you became a chef, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I am Chef Lean. AKA Kathleen, AKA Chef Lean, you know, all the things. I am originally from California. I now reside in New York City. I became a chef because I just love cooking. I love like everything that surrounds food. I love that your health platform has brought me on to help people think differently about food because a lot of times, like what you eat is so important to how you feel. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been eating like trash and I, I kind of feel like trash, but you know, <laughs> it, you always have the opportunity to reset. Um, so yeah, I love that just being able to feed yourself it's so powerful i love teaching children how to cook i love teaching adults how to cook 
Um, we all have to eat, so we should all have some capacity to cook for ourselves. Um, and so I just really love sharing that. And I also, you know, work for really cool, famous, high net worker people. But I just really love just cooking for my friends and family on a regular basis. And now that I cook all the time, I really enjoy like project cooking. Like, so with Thanksgiving coming up, the first time I'm hosting Thanksgiving in my apartment in New York City. So I'm super, super excited to like, just be able to be slow and easy about it yeah. and do things at my pace and share it with like my closest family. That's awesome. Yeah, normally with Thanksgiving for me, I'm in charge of the desserts. Normally my mom takes over like the main cooking situation. I know I've cooked before, but I don't know how it's gonna be with the professional chefs. So that's why I was like, let me prep a little bit before. Um, but I'm super excited to be here with you. Thank you again. And I guess we should go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's get started. So first let's tell people what we're making. If you are cooking, also like if you're cooking along, let us know. Again, my, I'm realizing my eyesight is so bad. So I'm like, who? I know, but this, the font is like this tiny. <laughs> uh, cooking along, let us know in the comments below. You know, help questions please drop them in the comment box below also we're so happy to have you here um and excited to just share these recipes with you these recipes are kind of twists on sort of things you might maybe you might serve at thanksgiving i don't know everyone is everyone has like very strong feelings about thanksgiving food i like to like mix in the traditional with the classics um and kind of have a balance of everything like i'm not messing with mac and cheese that is just what it is i'm not doing extra additional maybe a truffle oil maybe but generally I'm not messing with mac and cheese but when it comes to vegetable sides I really like to keep them interesting and so that's why today we're gonna make two vegetable sides that would be really good at Thanksgiving that are also really good for you we're gonna make the miso mash sweet potatoes so you know <laughs> black people we, we love this the sugary coated cinnamony vanilla and they are delicious they deserve their place but you know maybe try this out before Thanksgiving and see if you want to make two versions of sweet potatoes and then we're also going to be making a broccolini dish or a broccoli dish with some blue cheese that'll be very very tasty kind of adds an element of freshness oftentimes at Thanksgiving everything's so heavy um even if you are having vegetables maybe you're having collard greens or string beans but they're like often laden with a lot of fat and butter which again nothing wrong with that Thanksgiving is the time and place but if you want to lighten up your meal or your table a little bit, or these are great like everyday go-to recipes to just have in your fridge um, to eat anytime you want. Um, and then also I'm going to be showing you guys or we're going to be making together kombu kombucha. <laughs> uh, this is something that takes a little bit longer, but I thought it'd be interesting to talk about since we're talking a lot about uh, fermentation. And so yeah, those, those are things we're making. So let's go ahead and get started. Did anyone Anyone have anything to say? Oh, I think someone, oh, cooking along. Someone's yeah, cooking along. along. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Also, a note about me, I am, I, give, I gave you guys a recipe list with very specific amounts of things. The only recipe that you really have to be very specific about is the kombucha, kombucha, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, um, everything else, I really want you to follow your instincts, trust, your, trust how you feel, trust your own taste buds. Everyone's taste buds are a little bit different. So I like to say recipes are guidelines, not like strict rules. Um, and I'm gonna give you a couple different ways to like make these things also, uh, just for future reference. All right, so let's get started cooking so we're not here like all evening. Um, the first thing that you wanna do is cut up your sweet potatoes. I'm going to put my camera down. So to peel my sweet potatoes, I actually don't even use a peeler. I just like cut the edges and then use my knife to just kind of peel off the skin this goes a little bit faster That's than so much faster i peeled mine like the old school way but that is so much faster yeah like when we were in culinary school and having to peel like thousands of potatoes i learned i learned this trick yeah. um also i want to note we're going to be roasting our broccolini so you want to turn on your oven to 425 if you have confection you want to use that setting which yeah. Oven is, um, it just circulates the air a little bit more, so it gets things uh, more roasted and toasted a little bit faster. My oven right. says to do single rack, multi rack, roast. Is there like a, a preference? Um, well, I guess it's asking like if you're going to be cooking multiple things, uh -huh. I, I would be the roast version. Roast. Um, I've, never, I've never heard of single versus multi rack. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. I also. 
<laughs> never cooked anything convection. So this is gonna be fun. I'm excited to see how it comes out. Yeah, so convection is just gonna make things like browner and roast a little bit faster because the air is circulating a lot, like around everything. Got it. All right, so generally you wanna peel your sweet potatoes. If there's a little bit of skin on, it's not the end of the world. The skin is actually really good for you. Um, Sweet potatoes have a ton of fiber in them, which is why they're super good for your gut. Um, and also, and then once you get your um, sweet potatoes cut, we're just gonna cut them into like a medium-ish dice. It doesn't really matter so much because we're gonna be boiling them and mashing them. Really, we're doing this just so they'll cook faster for this live. Um, you could also prepare these by just roasting them whole in the oven and then mashing the flesh inside after. Mm -hmm. But that method takes a little bit longer. Um, it takes about an hour or so for sweet potatoes to be chopped up. I mean, uh, roasted. So this way is going to just go by a little bit faster. John said he's never peeling a potato the old way ever again. <laughs> I agree with you, John. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> when you when you learn when you learn things, you do better. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so what made you want to become a chef, Chef Lean? What did I? What, what made you want to become a chef? I wanted to become a chef because I just really enjoyed the, like, the, the mood around the table. My mom used to make us, and what we're going to do is we're going to heat a little bit of olive oil here and put the sweet potatoes inside. Um, you weren't upset when you were eating. Um, and I just really love that feeling like of being around the table because for me it's more, it's not even just about the food. It's about like the entire experience, the community you're able to grow around the table, even like in your own immediate family. Um, now we have our daughter. So like the meal time is just very special. Um, and I hope she feels the same because yeah. <laughs> I did not when I was a kid, but now I appreciate it so much. Totally. All right, let me get my pan. My pan is over there. I'll be right back. Don't worry. All right, so just a little bit of olive oil in your pan, and then you're going to just put your sweet potatoes in. So again, remember, I'm going to tell you there's a few different ways you can do this. You can roast your sweet potatoes whole in their skin in the oven until they're nice and soft. You can do it the way that we're doing it. You could also boil your sweet potatoes um, from the point, like just boil them in water. I, like, it just depends how much effort you want to put to it because if you are boiling or roasting obviously you don't even have to think about it you just wait until they're soft this way requires a little bit more work but the cheat this is the cheat code because when you roast them whole you're going to get a lot more flavors because the sugars are caramelizing um lower so they're going to be a little bit sweeter as opposed to if you boil them they're going to like kind of lose their flavor in that water this is a cheat code to get the roasted flavor just a little bit faster because we're going to create some caramelization on the outside of the sweet potato and then we're going to put that vegetable stock in there and it'll get soft and still have a little bit more flavor than if we just boiled them straight. Interesting, interesting. I'm learning a lot already. <laughs> we just started. Yes, yes. I love You're back. No worries. Why you're doing things is super important and helps you like be more interested in the kitchen, right? All right. So we have our sweet potatoes in our pan. I'm gonna sprinkle with a little bit of salt. Every time you're cooking, you wanna season in layers. Uh, I know in our communities, we have this, kind of like, we're almost scared of salt, you know, like with all, a lot of us having um, issues with like high pressure and things of that nature. But my, as a chef, I'm not a doctor or nutritionist, like please consult with those people. But as a chef, if you're using like a kosher salt and seasoning in layers and not just adding a ton of like iodized salt at the end, your food is going to be much more seasoned and it's kind of better for you. It's going to be less um concentrated in in your food because it's going to be able to like kind of cook out also got it yeah i always was was wondering about that you know how there's so many different kinds of salts like i have himalayan pink salt here there's sea salt iodized salt all, seasoning salt like lowry's and stuff so you know somebody who is conscious about their blood pressure i've always wondered like 
what is the best salt that I need to use? But when you're seasoning in layers, then that makes sense that it's not just like a bunch of salt at the end and then it being at the top of the palate, you know? Exactly. It's not just super, super concentrated. And if you're talking about like the best kinds of salt, again, in my kitchen, I normally turn to kosher salt or um, sea salt. Himalayan salt is great. It's supposedly like the best for you in terms of how it like the chemistry, again, not a scientist, not a doctor, but what the people say. Um, but it is very expensive. So the other two alternatives I just gave are a little bit cheaper, um, yeah. less expensive. We don't want to use cheap. We're not cheap people here. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to just saute our sweet potatoes. Notice I haven't touched them because I want them to create that caramelization and that color. And how you're going to do that is just by not just letting them do their thing to create that color on them. Yeah. Also, while this is happening, cooking live is always so exciting, especially when we're doing lots of things. We want to start boiling our water for our tea because we want to bring that to a boil, dissolve our sugar, and also cool it down before we add the um, fermenting pieces. So Jess, you need about a liter of water, which is four cups and like a fourth. Um, and you can just bring that to a boil on the stove top and while, while we're doing this. I've got and this little kettle. Does that yeah. work? Yeah, as long as you have the correct measurement. Yeah. Or you can measure it. It can go to a liter. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's great. Awesome, yes. Um, you're just going to want to grab a bowl to, like, steep your tea in after. Got it. <laughs> great. Our audience, let us know how you're doing. What are you thinking so far? So far, we've cut our sweet potatoes. We're sauteing them. We're not moving them because of the caramelization and sugars we want to create. We're boiling some water for our kombucha. Um, and ovens are at 425 confection, confection, um, so we can get a nice roast on our broccoli. Speaking of our broccoli, I went to the store earlier today and showed you, uh, the, the most beautiful, gorgeous store, but, um, not, not ever, but the best in Harlem. Um, broccoli is essentially broccoli that is fancy. Did you, were you able to find it? Yes, I was. And I found it at Albertsons. I tried to go to a store that was like, regular regular just to, to see if I could get as many ingredients there as I could. Um, so I found the broccolini there. Nice. nice. Yeah, I love broccolini. Again, it's a little bit more expensive. So it's not a every time every day situation for me. But it's just like so cute and like festive and it looks really nice on a plate. Um, and you don't really have to do anything to prep it, you can give it a rinse. Um, and then you also want to just chop off the, like the more woody stems, but you don't have to chop off that much. I only chopped off about, I don't know, maybe like a fourth of an inch to a half of an inch, um, depending. I'll give it a little bit of a rinse. Some people like to prep their broccolini. It just gives it a little bit more fancier feel. If your stems are really thick, they'll peel them with like a peeler, but to me, unless I'm doing like something super, super fancy, I normally just leave it just like this. Um, for our recipe, we are going to be roasting it. And I want to make the most out of my broccolini that I can. So for the thicker stems, I'm going to just kind of chop them. Oh, let me pull you down. I'm just going to kind of um, slice the bigger, thicker ones in half. So they're all kind of equal size. So I end up with something like that. But like this, I'm going to watch my broccolini. I'll be right back. Okay. Like this one, I'll just leave. Um, this one, I'll probably cut. And again, this is just an extra step. You don't absolutely have to do this, but you know, it makes your bunch of broccolini go by a little bit uh, longer. Um, Cause don't you hate it when someone gets like so much stuff and then they don't eat it on their plate? It's better to give people less so they can get m more servings rather than um, bigger pieces and then they're wasting it. So I just cut the bigger ones in half um, actually, I have one more to cut in half. And then I'm going to just, I haven't rinsed off my broccolini, so I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a rinse. And then I'm going to While you're giving it a bit of a rinse, can you tell us who's the most famous person that you've worked with so far? Um, so let's see. Let's see. Most famous, probably, probably the first person I ever worked for, which was uh, Will and Jada Smith at their house. I was a kitchen assistant. Started as a kitchen assistant at their house is my very first job ever. It kind of probably some kind of laid foundation for my entire career in terms of how I think about um, just service in households and uh, how to move. Um, yeah, those probably the most famous. Okay, I'm gonna check on my 
sweet potatoes. I want to bring them over to you guys. Woo! All right. So what I want to show you. So long. And now they have this nice like color on them, right? So that is that nice flavor caramelization happening. Now I'm going to add in my um, broth or water just to cover. I believe in the recipe and it said one cup of vegetable broth. But if you don't have vegetable broth, you can always use water. Um, again, that's something, remember recipes are guidelines. Um, that's something that it just depends on how I feel. Like, do I feel like spending the $4 on the broth or do I just want to use the water? Um, when you're just using water, you might have to season it a little bit more like with salt or other things, but um, it's totally fine to just use the, to use water. But you want to use enough to just like barely cover the sweet potatoes. And then you can turn up the heat because um, really at this point, we just want them to get soft. We just want them to cook. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what, like, just as fast as you can, we want them to cook. You can also add a lid that'll help the cooking process go by a little bit faster because that steam will be trapped inside and will help keep the heat up. All right, so my broth. I wonder if I have a lid that uh, works for that. I know, I'm like rummaging through all my cabinets too, but I think I got one. I think this doesn't really match the pan, but it'll do, it'll do. <laughs> So the, just to refresh my memory, you said to pour the stock until it's just covering the potatoes, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Oh, just over. Because we want them to get nice and soft. Oh, nice. That quieted down my kitchen, too, so now I don't feel like I'm yelling at you. <laughs> exactly. Whenever you're searing or uh, or sauteing something, it gets, gets a little spicy, a little loud. Yeah. Um, my, my kettle is, like, so loud, too. So I was like, hey, hey, Chef Lee, you know? <laughs> All right, there we go. So sweet potatoes are super good for you. Like I said, they have a lot of fiber. They also have a lot of beta carotene and vitamin A, which um, kind of keeps a homeostasis in your gut, um, which makes you just like function a little bit better. Um, and then also pairing them with the miso. So let's talk about our miso while our sweet potatoes are kind of cooking. Miso comes in a lot of colors. You said you've never used it before, right? But you've had like miso soup. Yeah. Yes. Um, it comes in a lot of different colors, a lot of different flavors. Do you know what it is? It's by chance. Well, I know there's tofu in miso soup, but is it tofu or no? Or soybean? It's made from soybeans. It's essentially fermented soybeans. Got it. Some brands and color variations have other things in them. Like for example, this white has organic handmade rice, koji, so white rice um water and soy some have barley so if you are like intolerant to gl gluten you want to make sure that you, the the brand you, just, you have does not have um barley um some are flavored like i found this really fun one the other day and it has yuzu in it which is kind of oh yeah taste to like grapefruit it's really yeah fun. um so my pan is just kind of boiling i'm like is it boiling <laughs> we have somebody <laughs> ask will the broth absorb yeah so the, the broth will, um, if you have a lid on it, the broth will probably stay mostly inside because it's just like recycling back. If you don't have a lid on it, the broth will start to evaporate out. Um, if you don't have a lid on it, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on it so your broth doesn't completely evaporate. And if it does start to evaporate where there's none left and your sweet potatoes are not all the way cooked, just add more broth or more water. Um, and yes, if anything that you're boiling something in or something, and it's going to absorb the liquid, which is why if you want more flavor, broth is great. But again, you don't absolutely have to have broth. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have our miso. Suggest uh, Miso is a great probiotic. It has a lot of healthy bacteria. Um, and then the mostly if you, want, if you want to keep it in your fridge, it's great not just for this, but you can add it to like a background of soups or stews. You can make really good dressings with it. So there's a lot of uses in oh. it on just miso soup. Um, and it lasts like forever. Like this has been in my fridge for a very, a very long time, probably longer <laughs> than I have to admit, but, and this one I just bought and it's good until, um, February, 2025. So like, Oh, nice. Yeah. It lasts a yeah. long time. Yeah. Mine's good until uh, next year, August 23rd, 2024. <laughs> um, all right. So my water started boiling for my kombucha. <laughs> 
So now I'm going to add in, this is like so, like it's the simplest thing. It just requires something that we'll talk about a little bit later. That's the most complicated thing. But all you're going to do is steep your tea bags. We have some breakfast tea and Earl Grey tea was in the ingredient list I sent out to you. Five bags total for about a liter of water. And we want to keep an eye on this. We don't want to oversteep it. It should only be about four to five minutes. Um, if you oversteep your tea, you're uh, just like if you're just drinking a regular cup of tea and it's oversteeped, it could be a little bit more bitter. Um, so you want to, you do want to be cognizant of that. Got it. Um, and then for you, because you have the teapot, you want to do, you want to pour it into a bowl because we're going to add sugar also. You probably don't want to add sugar into that. Yeah, probably not. Okay, <laughs> let me let me readjust. I'll be right back. Okay, no worries. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh man. Look, at, my comments weren't scrolling. I'm like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> I thought I could use the I have. Oh, the miso, your miso went bad. Look at that. Fermented tofu. Oh yeah, look at comments weren't scrolling for me. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Say some more comments, guys. I was I was missing out. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome. We are getting real about our guts, making some delicious recipes you can use at Thanksgiving. Also, really fun showing you guys how to make some kombucha at home. Um, right now, we have cut and our uh, sauteed our sweet potatoes, and we are or simmering in some vegetable stock back there. We have boiled some water for our kombucha. Actually. I'm like, don't oversteep your tea. I don't even remember what time I put this in. Pro I'm going to say about a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're steeping tea bags in some water, about a liter of water to five tea bags. And um, then we're going to add about a fourth of a cup of sugar. So do you like um, kombucha? I do, yes. yes. To me, it's just kind of like beer, which is interesting. <laughs> but it, it's, it's good. It's ferment. It's fermented. Yeah. In a way. Um, so what we're doing is just one first, like first fermentation. And then after you do this one for fermentation, you can actually add flavor and make it more carbonated. I'll talk about that again when we get, when we get more to the end. Um, the most important thing about this first step is that you have to use, um, tea with caffeine. So basically the SCOBY is gonna, um, only be able to ferment it. It thrives off of sugar and caffeine. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's ways to do it with herbal, but if it's your first time, definitely want to use something with caffeine inside Got of it. it. Okay, well, I already messed up because my Earl Grey tea was decaffeinated. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, go try and see what happens. Okay. So the way that you know that your fermentation works, so basically we're gonna, after this, when we get to the next step um, and you add your SCOBY, if you're, at the end of like a week or two or three to five days, it's not starting to get like little bubbles. Like, have you ever made like a yeasted dough? Yes. Yeah. So you know how like when you put the yeast in the warm water, it like gets bubbles. If your kombucha is not doing that, then that means you, you kind of failed. But if you're yeah. other, just, you only have Earl Grey or do you have a No, this is Earl Grey and English breakfast. Oh, so yeah, it, I have both. It might work still. It's so okay, we'll see. I'll keep everybody updated. I'll do a little like recap. <laughs> let us know how it went yes um, I know. My tea is for about three minutes now again i don't want to oversteep it because kombucha already is like it's tangy it's sour it's aggressive like i kind of like it like sometimes i like it sometimes i'm like Ugh, i'm not sure um but if you oversteep your tea it probably definitely will be too bitter for you so you want to make sure to keep an eye on that got it okay all right i'm gonna check out my sweet potatoes back here and I also want to get our broccolini going. We have so many things happening. I know. So for broccolini, do we we need the baking sheet? Yes. We're going to roast our broccolini. So we need a baking sheet. If you do not have one of these in your home, please buy one. It is an important kitchen tool. Everyone should have one. Yes. Um, yeah. And then if you have aluminum foil in a parchment, it just makes your life a little bit easier if you can cover it with some um, aluminum foil. Cool. Split. Which <laughs> over here? I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't. I'm not, not sure he would even be down to try it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna take out my and then 
then a little piece of paper fell out or not paper but like one of the tea things came out i'm gonna take this out okay do not recommend doing that but i just did this water is boiling hot that's oh. not not genius of me and i'm going to just squeeze out the exit liquid oh hot again do not recommend chef hands happening here put these over in my sink and I'm going to add about a fourth of a cup of sugar. You can add a little bit more if you like, but a fourth of a cup is really all you need. Um, again, if you, recipes are guidelines, right? Do, yes. do it still. <laughs> Even with your heart. Season it until the ancestors tell you to stop. That's what I've always said. <laughs> Someone said, I'm still maturing my taste. I love, I love that terminology, maturing my taste buds. It's not that you don't like it. Your taste buds are just, you know, still, still working on it. Maybe because if you think about it, a lot of things you may not like as a kid, like for instance, I hated blue cheese, absolutely hated, but my taste buds are not mature enough. I love that terminology and I'm definitely stealing it. All right. So tea bags are steeped, sugar's inside. I want to stir it so that the sugar is dissolved. Um, that is kind of important. You can also do this overheat, but I want to cool this down as, as fast as possible. This kind of process of stirring sugar into hot water reminds me of making, <laughs> when I was a kid, I made a lot of jello. That was, that was like a project. <laughs> like, I want to make some jello. There you go. All right, we're getting it here. So, Chef Lee, what made you want to partner with Now Included? I I just really like what you guys are doing for the health community, um, specifically for Black people. I think that health and things surrounding it is something that a lot of us don't talk about openly. Um, or if we have specific issues, we're maybe sometimes often thought of as like weird yeah. or like, oh, nothing's wrong with you. Like, drink some ginger ale, you'll be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the community that you're trying, that you not trying. You are building, and um, I'm, I'm just very, I'm very grateful to be a part of it because as someone who, uh, I think I mentioned this before, I struggled with, like, gluten intolerance mm -hmm. in my early 20s, and, like, no one believed me, and no one, like, really cared. They're like, whatever, like, you're just making it up. I'm like, why would I make this up? Like, I love bread. I love to eat. Like, this is actually a disability to me. Like, this uh -huh. is terrible. Um, so it's just nice to have, like, people surrounding you that might be willing to listen um one of my friends who's actually watching was like one of my only champions when i was like i i and she is in residence to become a doctor so she's gonna be an amazing doctor who listens to people yeah uh, so yeah I, I really just love that and um i mean all we have not all we have but like our health is the most important thing like without our health we have nothing right. um think about having a simple cold right it's like, I can't, I can't function uh, until I feel better. So, and then like when you're better, you're like so grateful for life for like one day again. And then you're like, oh man, life. But <laughs> um, your health is like really, it's so important. Um, and it's so great that you guys are building community surrounding that specifically for us because we are so marginalized and unincluded in so many conversations surrounding health. Even if you think about, this is a very long-winded answer, I'm no, sorry. No. But <laughs> I feel very passionate about it. Even if you think about something as simple as like BMI, mm -hmm. it's not made like I am overweight. Like what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like according to BMI, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just, yeah, I just really appreciate the work that you guys are doing um, to make us feel more connected and informed for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, I mean, the reason why I've been drawn to being here is because like my mom and I both passed away on the table. That is like, my health story and how I began my life is that was just because like my mom has high blood pressure, which is also why I'm very conscious about like my heart health and, and just making sure that like I'm paying attention to the kind of things that I'm eating because I want to make sure that I'm proactively being cognizant of that stuff since it does run in my family. Um, and then also just, you know, I'd never met anybody who also had that same experience of like their family passing away on the table because of medical negligence and because of medical racism and because of people of her doctors not really listening to her and so thankfully like we're here we're both here to tell the story so i feel very blessed and grateful to be here but um you know it's important it's important for all of us to have a space where we can go and connect with other community members 
about what happens in life as a black person trying to navigate this health industry. And so that's why I'm here, why I'm, I'm excited to be cooking for my gut today and why, why I think Now Included is doing really wonderful work. So, yeah. Yeah, that's like super powerful. And again, like we're not, I think like how you connect and how you thrive the most in the world is by connection and vulnerability and Absolutely. letting people in there. Um, because we don't live in a bubble. We often as like in our society, we feel so isolated. We feel like we live in a bubble, but we don't. Like literally everyone is, someone in the world is feeling something that you felt or gone through something that you did. So it's really important to make those connections so that your mental health is good. Cause you're like, I'm not alone. Right. Like there are people, there are people that, um, you know, yeah, that's super important. I'm, I turned off my sushi potatoes cause I felt like the water was over boiling, but like, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt your story. Oh. It was like super powerful. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, and I'm going to move my kombucha from this hot pan just to another bowl. Um, just simply to cool it off before I move it to my um, jar because I'll tell you why. Uh, I feel like I have so much to tell you about this kombucha at the end. Um, but I want to just move this over to cool down faster move that out of the way and then also let's get our if you're cooking along and your water has evaporated or is near evaporation should look something like this um just check in on it if your sweet potatoes are not soft which mine are actually pretty soft they're done um then add more water until they get soft if they are soft just pause for now you can keep the lid on if you have a lid but turn off the fire so they don't over reduce and then we want to put too much broth in mine because mine still have quite a bit of broth. Um, is that okay? Should should I? They are pretty soft. Should I drain it? Some? Yeah, they're soft. They're soft. Um, you can just leave them for now. We'll we'll come back to it, and I'll tell you what it has. Okay, broth. turn them off. Um, um, all right. So baking, we want to roast our broccolini. Super simple to roast something. You put it on a baking sheet. You add a little bit of oil. Um, I, my go-to oil, is, oh, wait, I do that because I want to not have to wash my hands twice. Um, you season it with a little bit of salt. Oftentimes, I know it wasn't on your list, I also use a little bit of garlic powder whenever I'm roasting a vegetable. Might as well do it because I have it here in the house. Yeah, I don't um, to go get them. And this method is transferable to any vegetable. Like, it is the easiest process. Um, and it creates so much flavor and so much like depth of flavor by roasting it. That's I, I love roasting things. And I think the recipe is where it's like toss your whatever you're doing in a bowl with salt. And no, 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 that's too much. Just put everything. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> put everything on the baking tray, your vegetable, your salt, your oil, your garlic powder, and then just like use pans to kind of move it around so you don't have to dirty a whole nother bowl. Um, the only other tip I have when it comes to roasting vegetables is you don't want to overcrowd your pan because similar to um, sauteing or searing, you want enough space for that moisture to evaporate um, so it can get like that color and that like nice and brownness. So now I think I broccolini bunches and were maybe too big because with two of them, it was too much on the pan. So I'm going to save the next one for later. I do another do another batch later that's gonna be um a little bit better yeah thank you the broccolini looks good i mean i'm so excited to eat this broccolini later um we're throwing our broccolini into the oven 425 convection um i would say it depends on how your oven heats if yours is a, a top because everyone's oven your heat either comes from the top or the bottom yeah the top and you're roasting you want to put your um broccolini closest to the top if it comes from the bottom, you want to put it on the bottom. Um, and how you know, you should kind of feel it and actually even feel it. All right. Got it. You're just joining us. Welcome. Or if you've been here the whole time, thank you. We are making miso sweet potatoes, miso mashed sweet potatoes, a broccolini salad, and some kombucha, kombucha, which I've been struggling to say this entire time. Um, I wanted to also share with you, anyone have any guesses of how much one bottle of kombucha is in the store? Because this would be a reason to make it on your own at home. Anyone? Anyone? How much, how much, how about what? <laughs> how, 
is a bottle of kombucha in the grocery store. Oh, five dollars. Yeah, today I bought two. I don't know why I bought them because I'm making some, but I, the flavors just sounded good. Two to yeah, three. I bought this one. Go there because here in New York City, this bottle was six dollars. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, New York is a different breed. I I used to live in New York for those who. Oh, that one's nice though. I know the bottle. The bottle is what sold me. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> good marketing. Uh, someone ooh. said thirty dollars. Someone said fourteen dollars. Man, kombucha must be expensive, expensive where y'all are. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had this brand, but it just looked really. The bottle just sold me. I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And yeah. actually, I had one that was called like Ocean, and it had like blue sp spirulina in it. So it oh. looked, like and and then it looked like Hawaii, which is like one of my favorite places. So I was like, I think it was more about the memories. Like, oh, I just want to be in Hawaii. Anyway. It's very expensive and super cheap to make your house. Literally just sugar and tea. Um, and connect flavor as you want at the end. All right, let us work on our dressing for our uh, broccolini salad. Um, there's a couple, again, oh, also, if you don't want to roast your broccolini for this, you can blanch it, which just means bringing a pot of water to a boil dipping your broccolini in for two to three minutes, taking it out, rinsing under cold water, and then you can pair it with the dressing as well. I like the roasted way just a little bit better. Again, all these different levels and layers of flavor is what's exciting to me. But mm -hmm. if you don't have the time to roast, the blanching is a little bit easier and faster. Um, okay, so for the broccolini salad, or for the dressing, we need garlic, we need yogurt, we need blue cheese, lots of fermented things here. Yogurt is super good for you. Blue cheese is surprisingly good for you. Like oftentimes we demonize cheese in our society, um, mm. but it can be really good for you with like the lactic acids, um, especially blue cheese because of the way it's fermented. It also has like a lot of protein that you might not think about. Uh, we often think about meats having protein, but cheese can have a lot of protein too. Interesting, I didn't think that. What do you think of cheese is like, what, like a carb or something? Because it's in like mac and cheese and stuff. And you, yeah, you just think of it as not, or like a fat, like an unhealthy fat. Healthy for it. And I'm not like, if again, everyone should eat like uniquely for their body and how, what makes them feel good. Um, I know in our communities, a lot of people are lactose intolerant, but you might find different cheeses don't have the similar reaction because different, every cheese is processed a little bit differently and fermented differently and um, aged differently. And a lot of cheeses, like soft cheeses especially, like blue cheese, goat cheese, are like actually pretty easy on your stomach. So try it out. Let me know how you feel about it. Um, but again, follow, follow what makes you feel good. Um, but oftentimes when we think of lactose, it's more like those hard, super aged cheese or super processed cheese, like Velveeta or like the American slices. Like that's actually. Um, but <laughs> these kinds of things are a little bit better for you. Um, all right, so we have our garlic, we have our yogurt, we have lemon, and we have chives to make our dressing. And we need to grab a small little bowl. I'm gonna grab that back here. Oops. And you can, um, so I'm showing you the harder way to do this. If you prefer, you could just throw all of these ingredients in a blender and blend it up really fast. But since we have the time, might as well show you how to make the vinaigrette from like a hand kind of situation. Um, first thing that we're going to do is chop up our garlic. Again, if you really love garlic, use like um, two cloves or three cloves, like whatever, whatever you like. I love it. Um, we are, I was thinking like one clove. <laughs> I don't know about just one clove. <laughs> I like to get the base and then like allow you to be creative right totally um all right so we're gonna just chop this up you always want to use fresh garlic every live i've ever done i probably talk about how you throw away that garlic product in your fridge like that is not actual garlic because garlic has a property called um allison which as soon as you chop it open it becomes active and if you notice, like if you chopped garlic and then let it sit for a while, it gets stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And to combat that, um, when they make that garlic product, like in a jar, they add like a bunch of stuff to it to like preserve it. So it doesn't even, it does not taste like fresh garlic. It's not the same. Um, maybe there's a place for it. I don't have a place for it in my <laughs> kitchen. But, uh, <laughs> and I don't think you should either. But if you, you know, if it's near and dear to your heart, 
um, you know, keep it. I would highly suggest getting rid of that. If you want a shortcut to chopping up garlic, you can, I will, I will allow you <laughs> to buy um, already peeled cloves, but anything already chopped is just art. Like it's gonna, it's not preserved. Like the garlic in a tube. No, it's not, it's not the same. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have our garlic chopped up. Yeah. What I think garlic. Oh. You, I answered your question. I, I think that's okay. Um, and it, it lasts a long time in your fridge. If you have to um, chop up a bunch of garlic, I would definitely recommend using something like a food processor. This is another kitchen tool everyone should have. Um, you could throw in those pre-peeled garlics, like Thanksgiving's coming up next week. You need a bunch of uh, chopped up garlic, do it all in one batch. And then like, you can keep it in the fridge for the day that you're cooking or the day and a half that you're cooking. And then you'll have all, all your garlic. Like get that big bag from Costco, fill it on up. All right, so we have our garlic. We're gonna add our yogurt. <clears throat> our yogurt is our base. I, almost gone. And then how much did we say of this? I think it was a uh, half a cup. Yeah, half a cup of uh, yogurt. I now, I find regular plain yogurt, so I have Greek yogurt. Does that okay? Yeah. Greek, Greek yogurt is actually the best. Regular plain Greek yogurt. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to use any like flavored like vanilla or strawberry. That would be a little odd here. Uh, but yeah, that's perfectly fine. Greek yogurt, yogurt is actually the best for your gut. Oh, awesome. Well, look at me. <laughs> Intentionally doing that. <laughs> um... All right, so we have our yogurt, we have our um, <clears throat> garlic. We're gonna add in our blue cheese. Ooh. About, I think it was a fourth of a cup or so, but again, measure with your heart. I love blue cheese so much. I'm gonna add about that much blue cheese. And then I'm gonna rinse off my hands so I got blue cheese on my <laughs> I know, right? I don't know how you're keeping your station so, like, condensed i feel like i'm all over the place in my kitchen already <laughs> i mean i'm i'm cooking a lot messier than i normally do but it's a <laughs> time so i think because i'm just like wait chef lead i gotta make sure i'm doing the right thing <laughs> oh candace said does it matter if it's light or regular read uh the yogurt not, I think. not necessarily um that's just kind of a your own preference i have two kinds because even this is five percent fat um, but again, this is something else in our society that I think we're kind of over demonized is like fat is a bad thing. Not mm -hmm. necessarily like depending on where your fat is coming from or what kind of fat you're having. It, and even in moderation, it's not necessarily bad. Um, this particular brand of yogurt comes in like a 2%, a 0% and a 5% fat for, and like, Per six ounce serving, there's 15 grams of protein. That is a lot of protein. That's like really good. Um, that's why it makes for such a good breakfast. And um, protein does so many things in our body. It helps build our muscles. It helps give us energy. Um, so yeah, when it comes to fat, sorry, long-winded answer again. When it comes to fat, it's just really up to you. I think that the yogurt, the fat that comes from yogurt is, is good. Um, but if you're on like a super strict diet or really just trying to cut every kind of fat, then you might want to go for the zero percent fat. Welcome, welcome. A lot of people just joined. Hello, hey, everybody. Miso, mashed sweet potatoes, roasted broccolini salad with blue cheese, and kombucha. <laughs> kombucha. I'm gonna know how to say it in a bit. Um. All right. So we have our garlic, our yogurt, our blue cheese. We are going to zest in our lemon. Where is my zester? Here we go. So zest about um like half of the lemon zest in here. Zest is something I use very often in cooking. It adds a nice floral kind of element, that little tang in the background that everyone's like, ooh, what, what did you do to this? Um, last week I did an event for the Jordan brand and I made some string beans with lemon zest and brown butter and people were like, ooh, what is that? That is amazing. Brown butter is the key too. <laughs> Um, and the, the only tip about zesting is you don't want to like zest like this, like so much because you really just want to get that very first top layer of the zest. Um, you don't want to get like the white pith because the white pith is kind of bitter. So you just want to like pass once and then rotate, pass and rotate, pass uh -oh. and rotate. 
<laughs> yeah, because I was definitely doing it the other way. <laughs> so I'm he said so. I think that's how like we are just we just feel like you want to get it all out, but like really yeah, it's not gonna be. It's not tasty. Got it. All right. Get it out of the zester. We're just gonna tap that down. Uh, garlic yogurt, please. Oh, now we want to open up our lemon and get the juice out of it. I like to cut my lemons in a very specific way to get the most juice out of it. Instead of cutting it horizontal, I will cut it slightly off center, slightly off center, and then there's some seeds inside, so I'll just remove those. And then you can get like so much juice for like so little effort. And this works really well with limes, too. Got it. Is the trick of, like, uh, rolling your lemon, does that really help to release the juices, would you say? I think so. I, that, I do that sometimes. Okay. Um, this lemon. So, and we need about half, juice of half the lemon. Okay. If you are actually shopping out your lemons, you want to make sure that they're, like, not, like, super hard when you buy them. Yeah. Because that hard to juice all right so, so in our dressing we have our lemon we have our yogurt we have our garlic we're going to season with some salt and pepper and then we're going to chop up some chives and throw those in as well yeah. so, excited. Excited. and if you wanted this to be like a little bit looser i'm going to show you a way to plate it that i think is really pretty but if you wanted it to be more like a traditional dressing and not it's kind of like a dip consistency now um, you could add just like a touch of water to make it the consistency. Got it. Right. Yeah, mine is pretty like pretty right now. You said what? I said mine is a pretty dip consistency right now. Yeah, I I like that, and you'll see why at the end. Remix it later. I just add a little bit of water until it's a consistency that you like. Um, for our chives, I'm gonna chop them up and just throw those in. Chives are like a very underrated ingredient. I am my, my opinion. <laughs> oh, they're, they're so good. They're so good. Like there's kind of nothing better than like a baked potato with sour cream and chives. Uh, yeah, I know. And did I have like seen online places that you can grow your own at the house? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen like people putting the bulb in like glasses and then growing their own chives and they're like never buy chives at the store again <laughs> i don't know if you've ever done that before but i've seen it online i've never done it but um i would try it maybe when my child is not a toddler because yeah. right now, <laughs> the only thing i'm keeping alive in this house is her and my my garden plants <laughs> <laughs> um all right so here is our dressing again if you wanted to loosen it up a little bit you could add a little bit of water taste it like it um you can add more salt more pepper, lemon juice depending on your vibes i probably will want to add more lemon juice but there's a lot of tangy elements in here the yogurt is tangy the blue cheese is tangy it's so good i could just like eat this by the spoonful <laughs> so good yeah get a little oil oil freckles oh willa says she's growing some of her own chives um oh nice real troubles i do not have real truffles in budget in my life on a <laughs> but I, I also don't use a lot of truffle oil in things i can i find it to be very overpowering um but yeah i guess that's my answer i don't i don't really use it on my day-to-day -day basis maybe for like events and things and i don't really have truffle truffle budget <laughs> all right so we have our yogurt um mixture our broccoli meat is roasting. Our kombucha bucha mm -hmm. is cooling down. I, I got a little chive in here. I definitely need to take that out. Um, and then our sweet potatoes are done. Well, not done, but they're those. Just briefly check your um, broccoli meat. Oh, see my broccoli meat. Check your broccoli meat. This was about, I would say 10 minutes or so. Um, it should look kind of brown and kind of crispy. This is what you're looking for. Great. Looking good. So actually, since this is done, let's go ahead and finish off this dish, and then we'll finish off our sweet potatoes. Cool. All right. I move. I have kind of a small-ish bowl for the uh, dressing. Should I move everything to a bigger one? 
you have a smallish bowl. So, gonna, so the reason why I was telling you I like it a little bit thicker is because when you go to plate it, I'm going to grab a plate. You're actually going to put the dressing or this oh. dippy stuff, <laughs> dippy stuff, on the bottom and kind of smear it around. Smear. And then you're going to top it with the broccolini. Ever so artfully. You know, if this at a restaurant, it would cost at least $18. <laughs> like, oh, oh man. You want to place, artfully place your broccolini? Um, I was doing so well, and then it took a turn. All right, I'm just going to put that amount, because that's all right broccoli toasted almonds on top and if you want you can top with a little bit more chives so it's kind of like a really pretty presentation yeah so i have we have nut allergies in my family so i did not get an almonds but we love chives so i'm gonna add a couple extra chives yeah perfect um, Candace asked, what did I put on it again? What did I put on the broccolini? We put some olive oil and, um, some garlic powder and, some and then we roasted it for about 10 minutes at 425. Let's cut chives, throw those on there. So look at, this is such a beautiful and gut friendly dish. Love um, it. Lovely. did you taste your dressing? We didn't get yeah, your reaction. It, it was so, it was so tasty and I'm not like the, the biggest blue cheese fan. So I was a little bit like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but it was so good. Yay, yay, yay. awesome. Um, all right, so dish one is done. A great addition to your Thanksgiving table or any day you just want to see. Even just making the dip to keep in your fridge. Oh, beautiful. Love it. Okay. Um, even making the dip and just keeping it in your fridge to like dip crudite in. You can have those carrots or bell peppers and just dip anything you want inside. Amazing, versatile, great dish. Woo, All right, we did it. Yay, this one. We did it. So let's finish off our sweet potatoes now. Um, hopefully your sweet potatoes are a little bit, are still a little bit warm. Um, mine might not be quite warm enough, so I might have to go back to the stove. But basically, all we're going to do is add in our butter, about two tablespoons. I think I'm going to strain a little bit of my stock because oh, yeah. I'm still thinking. I'm still a bit liquidy here, so I will be right back. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. If your sweet potatoes are soft and you have like so much stock left, go ahead and pour some of that out. You don't want a ton of stock left over. Um, you want just barely enough because we're making mashed sweet potatoes. So you just want just butter. We're gonna add to our sweet potatoes, we're gonna add our two tablespoons of butter and about a tablespoon and a half of our miso paste. You please add so what does miso taste like? It gives a salty, sort of sweet umami flavor. Um, you want to start with less and don't add any salt until you mash this in because you might not have to add salt because it is already pretty salty in itself. So I um, this garlic herb butter. Do you think that is a good addition or should I do regular butter? You said what kind of butter? It's garlic and herb butter. I'm thinking of the flavors. Yeah, I think that'll be good. You think that'll go? I have regular butter, too. I just thought maybe I should add a little spice. No, you know, recipes are just guidelines. You should do you over okay. there. In the, in the <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I actually really love that brand of butter, too. Yeah, yeah. Kerrygold is a good brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, super herby and, and delish. Yeah. Yes, amazing. Yeah. yeah. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are finishing up our gut healthy recipes. Uh, so far, we made our roasted broccolini with a lovely blue cheese yogurt kind of dressing dip thing on the bottom, covered it with some chives and toasted almonds on the top. We are finishing up our ma uh, miso mash sweet potatoes. Uh, we boiled our, we sauteed our sweet potatoes, boiled them until they were soft. Now I just have mine back on the stove with about two tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon or so of miso paste and all I'm going to do is just like kind of mash that in um, once the butter is melted. We're going to finish off that with um, some cilantro as garnish and some pumpkin seeds for crunch. If you're allergic to nuts, you're not allergic to pumpkin seeds. No, but I 
can't find them in my store. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, I kept them from Halloween out of the pumpkin in class. Yeah. <laughs> um, there it is. Um, called uh, Pepitas in store. Got it. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to finish it off. Our garnish with some cilantro for brightness and freshness because it is a very umami, like, rich kind of dish. And some pumpkin seeds for crunch. So if you're not allergic to nuts, um, top them with any other kind of nut. Like, uh, I mean, pumpkin seeds are not a nut, but like um, pecans or even those salted almonds we are have might be nice. Um, and then also we're going to do a little bit of, I feel like my lime rolled off the counter. You're going to do a little bit of lime fest, potatoes, and a little touch of lime juice once they're mashed. So you said we're going to do the zest of the lime and juice? Yep. Got it. Found my lime. Price is averted. <laughs> I do. Yeah, got mine as well. Zest and Everything you cannot go wrong. If you just are like, I want to make this special, add zest and it'll be amazing. All right, zest of the lime. Let's turn off. And then I'm going to take a masher and just kind of mash that butter and miso paste into my sweet potatoes. And you can get as creamy as you want or leave it a little bit more textured. I prefer like slightly more texture over like super silky, mm -hmm. but do you? You could also pass. Pass it through a ricer if you prefer to make it like super silky. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It does smell really, really good. Just even just this lime zest, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Get in my bed. Such an interesting combination of flavors. Totally. So what does miso paste do for us? It boosts like our health intestinal cells. It helps build back your intestinal cells. It also helps immune function and food digestion. Like the combination of the sweet potatoes with all their fiber and then like the kind of probiotic elements of the miso paste is really a powerful combination for your gut. Welcome, if you're just joining us. Right yeah, now. But I didn't really know that miso paste had like was such a superfood because I love miso soup, but that's really the only way that I've ever had miso. Yeah, that's how like most people have it. Yeah. We don't, and like I said, have if you cooked along or maybe you're inspired to make these dishes after this, um, have a lot of miso and it goes away, but you can always put it in like even like the background of a chicken noodle soup or a dressing. There's a lot of different ways to use it, even just like take a little bit and like mix it with some rice, and it gives like really interesting. A different flavor than you're used to. Okay, I'm gonna taste mine. I need to do to these to fix them. It's Kira said, I love miso, especially the soup. Good to know it's good for my gut. Yeah. All right. All right. This is really good. The lime zest is like, it kind of brings out that super saltiness of the miso. I'm gonna cut my lime and just squeeze a little touch of that in there. A little bit of the juice, you said? Yeah, a little bit of the juice. All right. I kind of want to add honey because you know that's just what my people love <laughs> potato but it is actually at this moment perfectly balanced there's enough sweetness from the sweet potato to make it sweet it's just not that like nostalgic coyingly sweet flavor i'm used to um, yeah. if you wanted to you totally could it's not gonna it's not bad um honey maple syrup any kind of sweetener i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it though i'm gonna you know try new things i'm gonna let my taste buds mature yeah, I, I kind of like my sweet potatoes a bit more savory. Like when I just roast them up diced, I put like garlic in them and olive oil, salt and pepper, the whole nine. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to see how this one tastes. I haven't tasted it yet, but it's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see it from there, but that's what we've got. Oh yeah, that looks great. Cool. That looks amazing. All right, I'm going to plate my sweet potatoes up. So I'm gonna grab a bowl. I'm gonna grab a spatula to scoop them out of my bowl. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, look at that. That's yeah. Ooh. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and, and what did you get to plate it? Just the regular bowl? I just got, well, I'm kind of plating it family style as if my family would eat this. Nola might. I can't, I don't know about Chris. I'm gonna Nola it individual style because I'm probably gonna eat all of this. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna put it in here. 
in this little like serving size kind of bowl. I am just, oh wait, I don't even think I have any honey. Oh man, see, look, it's, it's, it's the Lord telling me not to add any extra honey. <laughs> no extra sugar for me. Um, but I am gonna chop up a little bit of cilantro to top it off. That's gonna really complement that um, lime juice as well. Top it off with a little bit of cilantro. I'm gonna add um, those pumpkin seeds for just a little bit of crunch. Again, you, you could use any kind of nut that you like. But that is what I would suggest. And there we go. And you know what? I think I might add like a pat of butter. <laughs> Ooh, I love cilantro. Cilantro is a very so good. Some people love or hate it, and you're actually genetically disposed to love or hate it. It's not. Yeah, isn't that wild? <laughs> I think it tastes like soap. Yeah, I, I feel sad for those people. I know, me too. I'm gonna add a pat of butter since I was I was blocked from my honey blessings. I'm gonna <laughs> add a little. There we go. Oh, beautiful, love it. Um, yes, it looks so good. It is so good. Did you not hear uh, Ariel's? Mm. I know. <laughs> that wasn't even like a planned. Like it for real is delicious. I'm gonna take another bite even while we're waiting on the or while we're about to do the kombucha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so yeah, if you're just joining us or you've been watching, our two main dishes are done, our broccolini with over blue cheese and the sweet potato with the miso, so good. I'm just, yeah, I'm very excited to eat this later. So let's finish off with our kombucha. Um, we steeped five tea bags with some honey earlier and then we wanted to cool it down before we added it to our glass container. I have something floating here that's, I don't, I don't know what happened, what got in here? Oh, I think that's just a piece of tea. Okay, we're fine. Um, now what we're gonna do is simply add it to a, I suggested in the ingredient list, a mason jar. And then as I was measuring today, I realized my mason jar I have is too small. So I'm yes. gonna <laughs> this picture. I'm a little afraid, I really, really, really hope this is cool enough. Um, because you know when you put hot things in glass, yeah. it can sometimes yes. yeah, which will make it really exciting for everyone watching. Not so exciting for me. I think it's cool. <laughs> so I think it's fine. Um, but you want to make sure whatever you're using is super super clean because you're gonna leave this out at, for, at room temperature, and you don't want any like weird bacteria growing, right? You just want the good bacteria growing. Um, so what you're gonna do is simply transfer your tea cool down tea into your glass container and then you're gonna add your scoby so this is probably the hardest thing to find um in any of these recipes i really just i just bought this off of amazon it was like 12 dollars um the only really other way to get one is to know someone that already makes kombucha and like get it it's similar to a sourdough starter so you know like people sourdough and like different ones are different um but yeah i just got this simply off of amazon i think i'm gonna watch you for this part and then do mine later okay um so yeah it comes the scoby is basically it's a acronym it stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast mm. and you cannot make kombucha without it because this is what's going to take that take that caffeine and sugar uh, turn it into like the fermented tangy kind of sour sweet thing that is kombucha um and really all you do is you add you're gonna add it including the juice that comes with it you're gonna add all of this kind of looks gross <laughs> to be honest <laughs> but add the whole thing i added the juice first and now i'm gonna add the actual scoby um into your pitcher and then you're gonna cover it it's so weird it's like jelly and yeah <laughs> all right and then you're gonna cover it with something like a muslin cloth or a dish towel basically you just you need it to breathe so you don't want it to have a lid because the lid is gonna like basically kill the fermentation but anything that will allow it to breathe this is gigantic i definitely should have cut this before <laughs> I need all of the muslin cloth um or muslin cloth um, right. <laughs> you just want it it's able to breathe for the first fermentation and you're gonna let it ferment at room temperature 
Wow, these cutting skills, amazing. Um, let it ferment at room temperature for three to five days. Oh. A lot oh, wow. of fermenting, you're gonna to wanna to taste it, not the first day, but on day three, start to taste it and see how the flavors develop. Because what you're looking for is that tangy, sour, but like you don't want it to taste like not good. <laughs> Um, and it can over ferment. So depending on how it ferments, like the process of, process of it fermenting is going to depend on a lot of factors, like the temperature of your house, the moisture in your house. Um, so it's really something you have to just kind of like guess and check, especially the first time you're making it. So does, does the uh, eventually like dissolve or what happens to it? Great question. So, so the SCOBY actually, if your fermentation process happens correctly, it should actually become two. So then you'll have, you can like pass that on to someone else. Oh. Um, actually grow into two scobies. And you can keep whenever, like when your fermentation process is done, keep the scoby with like another, um, with a little bit of the liquid, just like the amount of liquid that came just to cover it. You can keep it in your fridge for like a month and make like another a batch of kombucha later. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> um, once your kombucha is um, fermented, then you do want to put it in the fridge, like to drink it. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't keep like homemade kombucha for more than a week, especially like your first couple times making it, just like for safety to make sure like you're getting the processes right. Um, and then if you want to double ferment it, after the first process is done, you can add like fruit juice or like more sugar or more just different flavorings. And then you're gonna actually put something with a lid on it. Like, um, I don't have one, but you know those lids that kind of like flip up? They're yeah. like little bottles. Um, and in that process, it's gonna get a little bit bubbly in the first fermentation, but the second time that you ferment it with that lid on, it's gonna carbonate like for real. Um, again, it's kind of like, remember at the beginning of this, we talked about project cooking. It's kind of a project, something yeah. to explore, but I definitely wanted to just talk about it because it does have a lot of different health potentials. and you're saving yourself a ton of money because as we discussed, <laughs> bottles of kombucha are like $8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and there's tons of like information on the internet that like will guide you through the process. YouTube is a great resource. Um, but I hope I made it like a little bit more clear even just here in this, in this small amount of time. Absolutely. Yes. And people will be able to watch this back again. And so they can see and hear about all of um, the different things that you talked about later on. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we're done cooking. Look at all these things we cooked in like an hour. We made our potatoes. We made our broccolini with a blue cheese kind of dressing. And we made our kombucha that will have to um, ferment for the next couple of days. But I'm excited. I'll update you guys on the process too when I like am tasting it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yay! Oh, uh, Chris says that Nola asked me to eat. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be tearing up these potatoes. I, I, oh yeah. And probably the blue cheese. Nola really likes blue cheese. Yeah. No, it's good. I'm excited to to share that with my family too. They're gonna love it. My dad is like the huge blue cheese fan, so it's gonna be really good. Awesome. Um, awesome. Uh, so let me just close out. I wanted to say thanks everybody so much for joining the live. Thank you so much to Chef Lean. I'm so excited that I got to try these like new recipes. And I really, my favorite is the, the sweet potatoes so far. I haven't tried the broccolini yet, but the sweet potatoes are like really, really good. So I'm like, let's wrap this up so I can eat the rest of these once we're done. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Chef Lean, you're going to be one of the first people to be a part of the new Now Included experience. So for those of you who haven't joined Now Included just yet, make sure that you go to nowincluded.com. You can find the link in our Instagram bio. So check us out and join our waitlist so that you can be among the first also to participate in the new Now Included experience. Awesome. Awesome. And have a happy holiday and think about, think that, you know, when you're eating healthy, it doesn't have to be not delicious. Like you might, you're going to yeah. have a scenario like, oh, this is, this is actually <laughs> um, So really, really excited to be part of this community. Thanks for the opportunity. And if you guys have any questions about Thanksgiving, feel free to slide in my DMs and I might just answer you, help you out in the kitchen. <laughs>
Absolutely. Make sure that you're following both of us. So Chef Lean at Chef Lean, now included at now underscore included. And we look forward to the next one. We're going to be having two more classes with Chef Lean coming up in the coming months. So make sure, <laughs> did you see those balloons? I don't know why they were right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> make sure that and stay tuned to our Instagram to learn more. For sure, for sure. All right, have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.